Up your horn if you can hear me. Truly, again, we thank God for everything. For Ty's life, for the things that's being done in, in his life. I guess the family now is going to do their final viewing. Family's done. Again, hunk your heart out. Let's give the Lord a hand praise for everything. At this time, we're getting ready to do to send our brother, our friend, our cousin. We're going to send him off first class. Amen. Can everybody hear me? All right. At this time, we're getting ready to have our invocation. It's going to be coming. From the evangelist Goldie Henry from Hensley Temple. And we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love and your kindness to us. Lord, as a family, we ask you to strengthen us, lead us, guide us. Let us lean on you and get through these little clouds in our life. We love you because you're so good to us. You're better to us than we've been to ourselves. We appreciate you because of who you are and what you are to us. Lord, be with us. Be in us. Use us according to your will and according to your way. We'll lift your name and we'll tell you thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Because we love you. All these and other blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen and amen. The Old Testament scripture is coming from Tony Welch, followed by the New Testament scripture by Cindy Taylor. be reading to you Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1 through 8 and it reads to everything there is a season and a time to, to every purpose under the heaven a time to be born and a time to die a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted a time to kill and a time to heal a time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. I'll be reading. St. John chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. 
let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. For in my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go, you know. And the way, you know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither you go with. And how can we know the way? And Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. May God bless the hearing of those who heard his word on today. Amen. This is a celebration. Amen. All of us got to go this same way. But we are going to celebrate Ty because I know today Ty would be somewhere just laughing. And he would be clowning somebody. And he would even make a phone call just to see how you're doing. So that's Ty. He want to know what's happening. He'll tell you the happenings in Akron. And you're right here in Akron coming all the way from Florida. We call him the Beacon Journal of Florida because he has all the news and he want to make sure you're going to go by and check on somebody and let them know that Ty said hello. So today we saying hello to Ty and also good, not saying goodbye, but we're going to see you later on the other side. He, we're going to be rejoicing. He's going to be there with other family members, other friends that have went on to glory before him. But how many of you know that God is still looking down and he's watching over us and he's going to take care of each and every one of us individually as well as collectively. We get ready to, as you have your programs, the programs is not going to be read out loud. We're just going to ask you that you read the program silently. And following the program, we're going to have acknowledgments and words of encouragement. Following that, we're going to have two tributes. And if I got, uh, it's, it's really going to be two tributes, and it's going to be two minutes. If I got to pull your coat, you know that you don't win over your time. So we're going to let you read the obituary right now. Amen. We get ready to do our acknowledgments and words of encouragement. Acknowledgements from the Christian Love Community Seniors of Akron, Geraldine D. Johnson, founder, New Trinity Missionary Baptist Church, on behalf of Gladys Washington and Luther E. Johnson, the interim pastor. The 
Livingstone Baptist Church, Barberton Church, Pastor Paul A. Watson Sr. and Livingstone Baptist Church family, and St. Ashworth Temple, Elder Robert D. Burnett, and family. The acknowledgments to the Tyrone Brown family wishes to acknowledge the people's appreciation and many comforts, messages, floral, and visual tributes and prayers, and many other acts of kindness and concern. Thank you, and may God bless you all. Praise the Lord to everybody. Hug your horns if you love Jesus. Right now, we're getting ready to go and have our tributes. We got two people that's going to come and do their tribute to Ty. They have two minutes. First one is going to be Rob, he's going to come. And then the next one is Marquita, if she's here. If not, it'll be just Rob. same as I'm going to miss him 10 days from now, 10 years from now. Um, but nonetheless, I'll be a better man just for having him in my life. So I miss you, brother. I love you. And, uh, I will never forget you. Thank you. Turn the mic on. Lord Jesus. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yep. How many of you know Ty's favorite saying? Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I don't know how many phone calls I've, I've gotten. And he always in, we were good talking about something. He always ends with, Lord Jesus. Now, as we look around, we're looking at a lot of family members, a lot of friends that have come through to pay, to pay their tribute to Tom. I'm going to miss those phone calls because he would call me about 7.30 in the morning. Floyd, what you doing? Well, number one, I don't have my teeth in, so I just woke up. But he would just go on and, and carry on with a conversation as though I was fully woke. But I never let him know that things were going bad or things were going down. I felt bad because every time when you talk to him, he's always got an uplifting message. A lot of you have been encouraged 
by the words that I have said to you, things that he has done for you and with you, called you at different times of the day. But even though he's not physically here to say anything to you, but each of you have memories. And hold on to those memories, whether it be as we're looking at this obituary, as we look at the program, we're looking at the pictures. And some of us can remember when those pictures were taken and what was being done with those pictures. But God is a good God. God makes no mistakes. Some things we don't understand. But through it all, God is going to take care of each and every one of us. So Ty, Lord Jesus is looking out for you right now. At this time, we get ready to go, do our eulogy. The eulogy is coming from Pastor Robert Dietrichnet, Pastor of St. Ashworth Temple. But before Robert comes, we're gonna have, Pastor Robert comes, we're gonna have a musical selection coming just before him. And after he comes, then he's going to come and do the eulogy. preparing the music for this ongoing service. What a fine tribute to have somebody on Good Friday to go home to be with the Lord. Good Friday. So that means that you had some people off from work. Some people are doing different things on this particular Friday. But it's a, it's a good Friday. God is doing some awesome things because on yesterday, it was snowing, raining. But look, look at God right now. We got a nice sunny day. And through this, this sunny day, we can get warm. For those of you that are in your cars, again, hump your horn if you love Jesus. For those of you that are looking by Facebook, this is a service on wheels so that you can sit in the comfort of your cars and not have to worry about how you look and dress and anything else, but you can be comfortable. Again, God is a good God. And we just praise him again for Ty being a, the type of person that he was. Again, I know you're all going to miss him. But, but again, through it all, we know that God is who he said he is. I want you to just, she's going to bless us in a mighty way right now. I want you to welcome to the stage, Shayna Wilson Williams. Right.
Father, we thank you for this time, this time, God, that you have ordained for us to be here and those who are listening via streaming or in the parking lot or even around the corner. God, you ordained this time for such a time as this, and we just want to be obedient unto you. We ask you, Lord, to have your way even right now. Touch the ears of every listener. God, move by your holy power even right now. I ask for a fresh anointing to fall fresh upon me. As I do what you have commissioned me to do for the next 10, 12 minutes, I'm asking you, God, to have your way. And God, of course, give me enough sense to sit down when you're through. We pray all these things and blessings in our son Jesus Christ's name, and we all say amen and blow our horns in agreement. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. I think you all was blowing your horns in agreement to the 12 minutes, but I'm going to try to keep to that even right now. I do want to honor God who is the head of my life and uh, honor uh, this family, this family which is such a uh, integral part of the family, the church family here at St. Asper Temple. We give you honor and all the listeners, uh, we honor you where honor is due. And I just want to get cut straight to the chase of things and I want to read a scripture and then go into what I think God has called me to do for such a time as this. And he said eulogy, but eulogy means really just to speak well of. And I always say that we should eulogize people while they are alive. We should speak well of them and give them their flowers while they can smell them and tell them just how good they are and, and how much we love them while they can hear that. Because they're not here. Where the tie has gone on into his eternal rest. So the word of God is for those who are listening even right now. And I'm going to read this scripture as Hebrews 9 and 27, a familiar scripture to many of us. And it says, and as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. God bless your holy word that is, 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 is written. And we thank God again for everyone that took the time to come out and sit in your cars and pay respects to this family and to our good brother. And we're um, ensuring that 
we want to have every of the COVID-19 protocols in place and uh, that's why we're having it outside because we didn't want to uh, go inside and, and, and take a chance on anything and Sister Kathy really wanted to stress that COVID-19 is real. And we all need to take every precaution, but just as real as it is, God is even more real. Because nothing happens unless he allows it to happen. And although we're outside, and this may seem a bit unusual to have a home-going service outside, but it's just fitting for our brother Ty, who was not a usual type of guy. He fought the good fight, uh, but God said it's time. Ty's journey, it's, it, it's ended here on earth, but his eternity began on March 17th when he was called home. He had his ups and downs and highs and lows, just like all of us have our ups and downs and highs and lows of, of life. But one thing I believe I can say about Brother Ty that he finished well. The last part of his earthly journey on this road was a road of recovery and, and uh, his, his sobriety, his, his road to sobriety was serving God. That's the road that he was on. He, he loved his family and friends, as you heard before. And, and I believe when God allowed him to move to uh, California back in 2014 to be near his family, it was the beginning of the most impactful years of his life. I just believe that. Uh, we all know that Brother Ty never met a stranger. He knew Akron's 411, as Brother Floyd said before, uh, the news can get out in Akron. Brother Ty had the news. He leaves behind his legacy as the families is what Sister Kathy called the family's Dr. Phil, always wanting to keep the peace. His legacy also included his favorite saying, as Brother Floyd said, is Lord Jesus. That's a good favorite saying to have. So allow me just to cut straight through the chase and just let everybody know that's listening that we're all going to leave here. And what will our legacy be? For that matter of fact, what will our destiny be? But I really want to talk about legacy. What will our legacy be? We must be, we must stop doing some stuff, start doing some stuff, or do more of it to make our legacy a reality. Just like the PS at the bottom of the letter, uh, your legacy tells people who follow you that this is what my life is all about. Proverbs 13 and 22 says, A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. So a good man leaveth an inheritance. Our legacy, our inheritance is part of our legacy. A legacy is something we leave behind to the next generation. And a good man leaves it not only to the next generation, but to his children's children. That's two generations. It can be his possessions that we place uh, in, in the hands of others. That could be our legacy. It could be the principles that we live that carry on behind, beyond our lives. It also could be people we have influenced whose lives are better as a result of knowing us. Or our legacy could be for those people that our lives were worse because of us. We should always try to remember that today is all we have. I used to have a little saying on the bottom of my email that said yesterday is history, uh, tomorrow is mystery, today is a gift. That's why it's called the present. They, they, there were some words that I saw uh, written in a book. It was on a tombstone. It said, I expected this, but not yet. Mm -hmm. Many of us, we think that we have more time than we actually have. We all hope for a long life, but none of us knows what tomorrow brings or if we will even see tomorrow. Proverbs 2, 27 and 1 says, Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring forth. We don't know what the rest of the day is going to bring forth. Hallelujah. Can you just move that car, please? Most of us will leave a legacy. We all will leave a legacy. We ask ourselves, how do I want to be remembered? 
If you don't care about that, that's fine. But who do you care most about? Do you care how they remember you? Our spouses, our kids, our, our, our parents, do we care how we're remembered by them? What do you want to leave with them of your memory? Most of us, we don't get to choose when or how we're going to die, but we all get to decide how we're going to live. And if that's the legacy we leave to those who follow us, we want to know how did we live? Some of us are just existing and not really living. Are we experiencing all that God has for us? Or are we coming up short? That's a question we should ask ourselves. Are we making full proof of the ministry, the, the work that he has for us? Or are we just existing? I read a story of a man who voiced his concern that when it came his time to die, he would discover that he had never fully lived. And I would venture to say to you all that's listening, if you have never lived for Christ, I mean totally lived for him, not partially, but totally, you have not experienced the kind of living that he promised. Anybody live for Christ and know that that's a whole new day, blow that horn and say amen. Any man, woman being in Christ is a new creation, is a new create creature. All things pass away, all things become new. I would venture to say, though, that if you haven't lived for Christ or given him your life, you have not fully lived. Because he's promised us some things if we live for him. He promised us to be the head and not the tail, the lender and not the bar. He promised us that he'll be with us until the end. He didn't say that things wouldn't go wrong or we wouldn't have issues or problems. But he promised to never leave us nor forsake us. Hallelujah. When it comes to legacy, a couple of things one should keep in mind. Nobody is going to care about the legacy you leave as much as you do. The second thing is that the sum of how you live your life each day becomes your legacy. If you tally up each day actions over the years, you can see how your legacy is shaping up. Just count up the years. Look back over your life. That's your legacy. Your life is like a book and it's being written every day. One day, that last chapter is going to come to a close. How will your story end? That's my question. We need to think about that. How will our story end? There's an inventor named Charles Ketterling. He once said, the greatest thing this generation can do is lay a few stepping stones for the next generation. How are we setting it up for the next generation? In short term, when you die, people, they will recall your name. They may talk about uh, with you with admiration about your accomplishments and, 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 and what you've acquired for yourself. They say, yeah, he was a good fella. Yeah, she was a good woman. Yeah, we used to laugh and joke. Short term. But long term, what they'll remember most is what did you do for others? Proverbs 10 and 7 says, we have happy memories of God of, of the godly, but the name of a wicked person rots away. Only what you do for Christ will last. 2 Corinthians 5, 9 and 10 says, so whether we are here in this body or away from this body, our goal is to please him. For we must all, not some of us, but we must all stand before Christ to be judged. The other version says, we will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. We will each receive whatever we deserve for the good or the evil we've done in this earthly body. And that's a fact. And as I close, I just wonder, when my time comes to go be with the Lord, have you ever wondered what that's going to be like? Because for me, I'm not afraid and I can anticipate what it's going to be like being absent from the body and present with the Lord, being with him in his presence. That's what we live for. We live this life to live again. Because when we go away, there's no more pain and no more sorrow and there are streets of gold and, and there is no more uh, sickness and no more death. 
We should be concerned about our legacy we're leaving behind, but most importantly, we should even be more concerned about the future that lies ahead even after death. I also wonder about those who may not be so secure in their future. We all have a future after life, whether you believe it or not. I wonder how those who are not so secure, how they think about it, or even if they care. But I tell you, who cares? God cares. And he wishes that no man, woman, boy or girl to perish. We all have a choice concerning our future. We are all saved by choice and not by chance. It's a deliberate move. So for those who don't know the Lord and you have not given your life to him and you're, you're, you're living on the edge, you may claim, yeah, I know God, but the scripture says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Don't fool yourself. Because some of us are fooling ourselves that we are saved, but are we really? Have we totally given it up for the Lord? Brother Ty, he made his choice. His last days were spent, as I was told, across the street from where he had a unique experience with God. It was at the Ames, and he looked out the window and said it was over there where he had a once-in-a-lifetime experience that stuck with him. And you too can have that experience. If you give your life to the Lord, you may be listening uh, at home or listening at work or listening to this even after because it's going to be uploaded even after the services. But you may listen, be listening to this and the spirit of God is speaking to you right now. That it's your time. It's your time to allow God to be the Lord of your life. It's your time to forsake all and give your life over to him. I know we're outside, but you could be in your car, even in the parking lot, and God can save you right now if you just lift up your hands and, 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 and admit that you are a sinner and tell God to forgive you and cleanse you and tell him to save you. He's a God that sits high and look low. You cannot be too far out there that he can't deliver from. And ask me, how do I know? Because I'm a witness of what he can do. And God is not a respecter of a person. He can pick you up and, and, and clean you up if you just turn it over to him. See, right now the enemy is in your mind saying that you're not ready, making you believe you're not ready. We can never be ready. We just have to be willing. So if God's spirit is pulling you right now and you're willing to come as you are, I guarantee you won't stay as you are. Brother Ty is a living example of how God can turn a life around. And we're here in honor and mem mem memory of him. And he lived the life that you too can live if you would say yes. And if that's you and you're in your car, I want you to just step outside your car if you want to give your life to the Lord today and you're not ashamed. And I say that because people need to see that God is moving. And if that's you and you're listening on Facebook, uh, you can just type it in. God save me. And I'm gonna pray right now and turn it over into the hands of our directors, I believe. God, our Father, we thank you. We thank you for this life and legacy of our brother Ty who touched so many people. We thank you God for everybody under the sound of my voice that's listening. God, we ask him for comfort for this family. And God, those who your Holy Ghost moved upon and is moving upon right now, I pray for them. If they have not received or accepted you, I pray the same prayer that was prayed for me, and that is you give them no rest or peace until they surrender. God, because we won't know that it takes total surrender to be able to experience the newness which you have for each and every one of us. So God, I pray that you strengthen this family. I pray, God, that you uh, receive those who did 
take the step to say yes to you. I pray that you fill them the more with your Holy Ghost power. And I feel, I, I pray God that you fill us all some more. Help us be better examples. Help us live this life out to bring you glory. Because we know time is winding up and we want to see you. So help us know, God, how to live this life. Keep us and we know we'll continue to be kept. We give you praise and glory and honor for all that you've done. All you're doing right now and what has yet to be manifested. It's already manifested in the spirit. In Jesus' wonderful, powerful name, we pray these things. And we all say amen and blow those horns if you are in agreement. Hallelujah. Again, on behalf of this family and St. Ashworth Temple Church of God in Christ, we thank you all for uh, coming out. We thank you all for uh, just the prayers of the, for the family and continue to pray for them. And as when the services is over and they're left alone and caught up in their memories and, and grief and nobody's around, we pray that God comfort them. We pray that God will do, show himself to be who he is, and we know who he is. He is a comforter. He knows exactly how to do it. And also pray for those who surround this family that we surround them with wisdom. And we don't say things that we shouldn't say, but we just be there, even experience the uh, ministry of just presence. So at this time, they're, they're loading up. We're going to the uh, Lakewood, I believe, cemetery. There's no repass. But we know that if you want to continue to connect with uh, Sister Kathy, continue to pray for you and family. Is there any last words that you want me to say or anything? Okay. Just, yes. I hope all you all have taken your vaccine, COVID vaccine. If you're taking that shot, why don't you blow that on? Amen, amen, amen. If you have it, please, please be prayerfully, prayerfully take that step. Ask God what you should do because if we believe in God like we say we do, God has it all under control. Time, I think we're going to end this service and please follow the direction of the uh, funeral directors and let's allow those who are going out first to go out and if you're not going to the cemetery if you would just hold it until they um, leave that would be great.
Thank <laughs> you. 